Howdy folks, it's AJ with a hunting gear guy. Today I want to show you guys how to set up your apple seed or maple seed sling and uh, how you can make your own if you really want to. Uh, apple seed is a marksmanship program in the US and here in Canada we have a similar one called maple seed. Maple for Canada, maple leaf, that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to get right into it just to uh, save you guys some time. So here's my sling. Now there's a couple of reasons why it's set up this way. Uh, these, this cam toggle buckle thing uh, here is facing down with the cam out here. And on some of them, when you get them from the factory, they'll be like that. They'll have the uh, cam buckle actually facing in. Now, for maple seed and that kind of thing, it's nice to be able to adjust these really rapidly. And the way we can do that, if it's down like this, is we can actually pull that fabric out. And then that unlocks the cam buckle. And then we can pull it to tighten. Or we could even pull the sling to loosen it off. So uh, do using this cam buckle in this way makes for a really easy to adjust sling and it makes it easy to adjust things on the fly. So when you're down on the ground and in prone and you need it like a little bit tighter, it's much easier to just pop this guy and pull it a little bit than it is to monkey around if it was uh, another way. So that's why we have that cam buckle that way. The other thing that's interesting, and this is specific for these kinds of QD sling swivels, is that you may want to have them so that they're, the hook is facing, uh, it, for me it's facing my left, that's because I'm a right-handed shooter, and the reason why is this sling, as you're pulling it, you want that hook to grab on to that sling stud. So you can see it there, and it's going from my right to left so that as I pull on this sling, it's not coming off. So that's another consideration you might want to uh, have. And then finally, our H buckle at the bottom here is facing out. And this is so that we can get into our loop sling when we uh, pull off this bottom sling swivel. And we can quickly feed the material through and pop on our loop sling. So the first thing to choose when we're setting up one of these slings is where to put the tail here. You notice that one side's been uh, uh, sewn in there. I'm going to choose to put it on the inside, so just so that it keeps this from getting picked at. Uh, so I'm going to make sure I don't cross it or anything like that. I'm going to grab my sling swivel. And since I'm right-handed, I'm going to have that pointing to the right. I'm going to loop in through there. And then I'm going to go, yeah, it's on the outside. I'm going to go up through the H buckle and then down through it again. And I'm just going to pull that through. Not all the way through, but uh, pretty close. And it should look something like that. Next, I need to get my cam buckle in there. So again, I'm just going to pull this straight. And then that cam buckle, I want facing down. So I'm going to feed the material through there. Then I'll get my next sling swivel. I'm also going to face it to the right. And it's on the outside there. And then I just feed it through the cam buckle. And before you know it, yeah, I'm done. Now in terms of hooking up your sling to your rifle, there's a couple of different choices I want to show you here. Uh, if you get like a traditional M1 Grand sling, you might find that it comes with this J clip on here, or J hook. Uh, that just hooks on to the sling swivel that stays on the rifle. And then you actually have to lace this through and just secure that on the uh, on the sling swivel on the front. So uh, it's not exactly a quick disconnect. disconnect. Uh, you know, it's kind of quick because you can, you can take this J-hook off, but it's not really as quick as, as you'd like it. And with maple seed, a lot of our rifles are 22s, so they're not going to have something that is super good. Like the, the, the problem with, with these J-hooks is that they're made for... One and one and a quarter uh, inch sling swivels, so and a lot of them out there are, are one inch, so that's not going to work for uh, for a lot of people if you're running like a, a 22. Now there are three other kinds of uh, of sling attached styles that I'm going to show you today. Uh, starting with the most popular one is the traditional quick disconnect sling swivel. Uh, these have a little post on there that uh, that will grab onto the sling stud on your rifle and they just grab on there. Usually they'll have like a little spring-loaded side VLE on the on the side there. You push it in and uh, and then you lock it into place to uh, put it on the rifle. 
The next style is a push button disconnect. These ones will have a, a, a nice big push button on there. And they've got these, these uh, stainless steel balls around the outside that grab onto a recess on the inside of a cup. So uh, a lot of uh, newer rifles, the aluminum uh, stocks, some of the different Magpul ones will have these options as well. These are, are really kind of the, the, the bee's knees for, for sling attach points because you simply push it into the cup and depress the button a little bit or, or just ram it in there. It'll hold on there. Some of them are even anti-rotation, so they have these little divots in there that keep the sling swivel from rotating in the cup. Um, and they're very quick to pull off because all you need to do is push that button in and then pull it out to uh, get it out. Now, really, it's like you need a rifle that'll take these, though. And the third style I want to show you is this HK clip. These things just clip into uh, whatever. They're actually pretty um, handy because you can just clip onto a, a sling swivel or if your rifle has these eyelet style on it, uh, these are the perfect deal for hooking onto those. So very quick to uh, uh, connect or disconnect and very solid on there as well. Now, in terms of sling material, the most traditional style is cotton. This is a, a replica USGI uh, military sling. Uh, these will typically have steel hardware on them, so they're a little bit nicer in that regard. Uh, they're usually one and a quarter inch width on the sling, so you may need to use different uh, uh, sling and, and hardware to uh, to use them. Um, and one of the one of the really things that uh, that I would recommend if you get one of these things is to uh, run it with some fabric softener and uh, just wash it a bunch and that will like really soften it up because these things are really stiff when you get them. If you opt to get some of the Milserp ones from Greece, for example, that are on eBay right now, they kind of stink like an old tractor too, so <laughs> it doesn't hurt to wash them a little bit. Now one of the things that'll happen with cotton that won't happen as bad with, with uh, uh, nylon or some of the polypropylene and that kind of thing, uh, straps is that these don't really hold water as, as badly as, uh, as cotton, so they're, they dry off quite a bit faster. Uh, they're more readily available, they're inexpensive. Uh, so this, this is an option, especially if you're gonna make like three or four or five slings, uh, definitely go this way. So the first thing you'll need to do if you wanna make one of these yourself is just decide what kind of material you're gonna make it out of and whether to go with one inch or one and a quarter. One and a quarter is a little bit wider and, and distributes the pressure a little bit more evenly on your arm uh, versus the one inch. Uh, one inch, there's a little bit more hardware available that's, uh, that's easier to find and a lot more uh, ubiquitous, I guess. Uh, if you're going to go with uh, nylon or poly polypropylene, there's a couple of different weaves and styles you can use. Uh, you can see like this one has a coarser weave and this one's more of like a seatbelt style, like very smooth. Uh, the seatbelt style ones, you know, they're very nice in moving in and out of the sling. Uh, the problem with these is that they, because they are so slippery, they don't really grab onto your arm or anything like that, as well as the cotton or the, uh, the that coarser uh, material there. So uh, this, when you put this on your arm, this grabs and resists twisting around your arm a little bit better than, uh, than the really smooth stuff. So there's definitely some pros and cons to the different kinds of material that you use. Now, in terms of uh, weight and breaking point, oh, we don't really need to worry. Like we're not going to be pulling. I think the the weakest stuff out there is like 600 pounds and you're not going to be putting 600 pounds of force through your sling. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, once you've got your material, you'll need to cut it to length. Uh, you'll need, if you're, if you're going to try to replicate the USGI sling, you're going to need about 48 inches of usable sling length, which means that you're also going to need to add on a couple of inches at the end there to, uh, uh, get the tail to it. Um, once you've got your sling length, so cut it to like 50 inches, 51, if you want to be, be a little bit more careful. Uh, once you've got that, then what you're going to need to do is get some tri-glides. That's what this guy is called. It's got a, a one in the middle and then two on the edges and they've got some ridges on there to prevent it from moving when, when it's been doubled over. And you're going to need to affix itself uh, somehow. You can melt them together or you can stitch them. I prefer stitching because uh, it's a little bit more of a solid connection and some of the weaker material when I tried melting it actually like I would, I would really easily melt a hole right through the material which doesn't look good and just didn't feel as solid as, as a quick stitch job.
Next, you'll need to choose what kind of sling hardware you're gonna use, and you'll need one of these cam buckles. These are just some cheap plastic ones. They're fine for this kind of thing. I mean, they, they hold as much pressure as we're gonna need for this kind of, uh, this kind of shooting. Um, but the nicer ones will be metal or something like that. So take a look around. Again, all this stuff that I'm showing you right here is off of uh, Amazon or eBay. So as you can see, it's not that bad to make these things. You know, uh, I would say if you and some friends are going to go do a, a maple seed or an apple seed, friends or family, uh, you might want to look at just buying the material and making them yourself. They're, they're very easy to do, especially these one inch style ones. There's like lots of materials on eBay and Amazon to just make them. Uh, if it's, uh, if it's a case that you just want to buy one off the shelf, uh, if you're in the U.S., Ammo Garand has some uh, some nice surplus USGI slings or newly made uh, USGI slings, both in cotton and nylon. Uh, if you're in Canada, Maple Seed will have these on our store, and uh, you'll also find these on eBay and uh, and Amazon and that kind of thing. Sometimes there'll be uh, new reproduction ones uh, made in China. Sometimes there'll be the Greek uh, surplus ones that uh, that kind of smell kind of funky. <laughs> Regardless, if you get one of the cotton ones, make sure you use that fabric softener on there just to make it a little bit more pliable and uh, easier on you. But uh, lots of different options. Again, you can make them. You could buy one off the shelf. Both of them work. And, uh, and they both work great for, for this kind of shooting. Thanks for watching.